I wanted to put together a tutorial that demonstrates how to take a mosaic image. Now this is an image out of Pix4D, but it could be out of Visual SFM or AGI Soft's PhotoScan. And the problem that I have with this imagery is that when I flew this day, my GPS sensor in the camera was hung and I was also unable to geotag these images using Mission Planner based on timestamps. And given that I'd spent a lot of time setting up, prepping for this mission, I wanted to make sure that I could make use of that imagery even though I didn't have the GPS data. So the final result of this tutorial, you'll see that now I have that image geo-referenced and showing up here on this map. So I wanted to talk through the steps of basically taking this aerial mosaic without any sort of geo-referenced information and then being able to get it to where it could be displayed on a Google map. Now let me briefly just dive into some of the tools that are used. I will post the links to these in the description below and I'm not going to go into detail of how to set all this up. I just want to show the process. So I'll be using QGIS and then you'll also need a couple of plugins. This tutorial is a great one that shows how to install plugins. And the two that are going to be used are the Open Layers plugin, which will give us a satellite map reference for our imagery, and then the Geo Referencer plugin. Lastly, we'll take that image that we output after we've geo referenced it, and we'll use the GDAL library, which is the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library, to actually convert that image into tiles that can be overlaid onto a Google map, which we see here. Now the first thing we'll do is open QGIS and under the plugins menu there is an open layers plugin and I normally use the Google hybrid layer and you can see here we're zoomed way out so the next step is just to zoom in to the location of where the imagery was taken. Now that we're zoomed into our area of interest I'll go to the raster menu and underneath there is a geo referencer so we'll go ahead and launch this plugin now Kudos to the developers of this plugin. It's truly amazing and it's just really been a huge help now that I'm able to geo-reference images that I wasn't able to before. Let me go ahead and load our image that was generated from Pix4D. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom into, let's say, a point of interest. You know, something that you know will exist in both the imagery that we've taken from the UAV as well as the hybrid layer from Google. Now, let me also make it clear that this isn't going to be as accurate as if you had very accurate GPS geotagging on your photos, or even more accurately, if you were to fly with some ground control points on the area that you flew over. But this is a great way just to get a nice uh, referenced image that can be viewed within Google Maps. Things that I like to use, buildings or structures that exist in both images and I found that I've tended to use rooftops uh, a fair amount and these little they look like chimneys so what I'll do I will click the add point button and so you'll see this one right here I'll just click on it then it's going to ask me to enter the coordinates I'm going to use the map canvas and from that that's this building right here so I will zoom in pretty close on the Google layer and you can see that same point that exists here. It's, it's definitely not as visible, but we'll go ahead and click it and cl accept. And you can see it references both this on the Geo Referencer plugin as well as the Google layer. So we'll go on and do another. I'll add a point to this other side right here. Click from Map Canvas. You can see I'll select it there. Hit OK. Now I've moved over to another building. I'll just go ahead and click at this point, kind of the top of this roof. And I'll do the same right here. Click OK. Now on the other side of the property, I know this is somewhat morbid. There is a cemetery which allows for some great geo-reference points. And you can see I added these four here. And these are the four on the Google map. And just keep in mind, you could do this all day long. The more you do it, obviously, the better your chances of, of accuracy. So I'm going to leave it with these seven ground control points that we've added. Now we get to move on to the even more magical part of this plugin. So I'm going to click this Start Geo-Referencing button. It's going to ask me to set the transformation type. 
There are several transformation types. I leave the defaults. I'm by no means an expert with these. The key here now is to specify an output image. And what I'll do is I'll just add georeferenced to the end of it. Click Save. OK. Now you see the georeferencing process has begun. And what it will do is take our source image and our points and actually output a georeferenced target image. Now that the image is done processing, it'll ask you for the coordinate reference system. I'm going to use this WGS84. So now I'm going to click OK. And what you'll see is that in our original image, if you remember our Google Hybrid map that we had loaded, now you can see our new image layer and it's overlaid exactly where we want it on our map. Okay, I've zoomed out and you can see our layer here nicely overlaid on the base map and you can see our geo reference points. What I'm going to do next is actually show you guys how we convert this to tiles so that they can be presented in a web map overlaid on a Google map layer. Before we convert our image to tiles, let me point out that this is the image that was created. It's our geo referenced image that we just developed in QGIS. Now you'll notice it's in a TIFF format and we actually want to convert that to a PNG. And I'll show you why. So if you were to convert it to tiles with a TIFF, you notice that we have this black boundary and we actually want that to be a transparent layer. So PNG will allow us to have that transparency and you'll be able to see the base layer underneath these black edges. So now we're going to use the GDAL tools, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This is the GDAL warp command, and we're using an attribute called SRC no data. It basically says to ignore those black pixels. This is our TIFF image that we georeferenced in QGIS, and we're going to convert that to a PNG file of the same name. So I'll go ahead and hit enter, and you'll see that it's going to do the conversion. So GDAL warp is done doing the conversion and we'll take a quick look and you can see now we have our PNG file that was generated from the TIFF. So this is what we'll use now to convert to tiles that we can overlay onto Google Maps. The next command we'll use is called GDAL to tiles. You can see it right here and we're going to specify a zoom level. These are our zoom levels that we want to apply tiles to for Google Maps. So I'm just doing zoom 15 through 20. This is our source spatial resolution. Sometimes you have to give it to that if it's not defined in the image. And in QGIS you can see that that's the spatial resolution right there. EPSG 3857. We'll give it the PNG file that we just generated. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter. And what you'll see is that it's generating tiles. And this will take a little while because there are plenty of tiles that are being generated here. Now we're done tiling. You can see it gave us a percentage overview and it got to 100%. Now let's take a look at the output. So you'll see that it creates a folder of the same name as the image. If I go in here, you can see our different zoom levels. And within each zoom level, there are tiles that specify different locations. So the key here is now we're going to open the HTML file and here you can see our image that we started with with no geo referencing now it has been tiled and I'll switch to the hybrid view and you can see that it overlays nicely right on top of that Google Maps base layer so pretty exciting stuff if you ask me especially given that this was done with a lot of open source tools such as QGIS the Open Layers plugin, the Geo Referencer plugin, as well as the GDAL tools. It's the process that I discovered a while back and just have been using it. Spent a lot of time learning how to do this. I wanted to share it with you. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.